Welcome to Linden, a suburb on the northwestern part of Johannesburg. I love this neighborhood. It's uh, walking, it's uh, lots of restaurants, surrounded obviously by more famous suburbs like Melville and Amarantia. Today we're having a conversation with Grace Molunge. She's the owner of the Kids Aviation Club, as well as the clothing brand Grail. Uh, Grace is trading cross-border here on the African continent. Um, it's very important for us to take the discussion further as we try to understand why cross-border trade mainly is done by corporate businesses. We're talking to Grace to see what opportunities there are for smaller businesses and how to access these opportunities. Welcome Grace. Do you, do you think the information that organizations need to gather to um, ensure that they understand the marketplaces that they want to either, uh, enter is readily available to them? Uh, information is always available. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you have to know where to find the information. Sure. Those who have access to internet are better off. Sure. Everyone won't have access to internet um, and that's why it's always better to make information available in many other ways. It could be either through introduce early, introduce um, marketing information early into schools, uh, introduce trade early in schools and also in communities. Sure. And research is also important, whichever way you do it, whether you Google or talk to other community members or to other businesses, research is always key. One of the key elements that we're speaking about today is relates to different African countries being at different levels of development. The South African economy, for example, is more structured. Uh, businesses have to be strong in terms of their brands. If you relate that to some of our neighboring African countries, trade is more at a micro level. Businesses have don't have the luxury of structured financing. Uh, cash is not running through particular systems, uh, it's more cash-driven economies. So in my discussion with Grace, we're talking about how does this impairment relate to making a successful uh, business uh, wherever you may find yourself in trade. Grace, in your mind, if a South African uh, SME would like to invest in, into another country, say for example Kenya, what, what kind of challenges are they likely to experience? Um, if a South African would like to invest into Kenya or maybe Malawi or Zambia, uh, it, it becomes challenging in that um, they had literal, South Africans had literal, and even when they travel, for you to be able to open your business or a, a franchise up in Africa, it will highly depend on who you, who you know up there, your collaboration sure. and your connections. In Africa, we like to call them connections. It depends on who you know. Uh, and remember, the local people already know what they want. And unless you can get a local person who is based in that country to tell you what is required, it will be very hard coming from South Africa to find out what is required in Africa. However, if, you, if you're up in Africa and you need to invest in South Africa, uh, we will find that... Um, Africans are, are very prone to come more to South Africa and not the other way around because they believe there's more opportunity in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And when they come here, they find that uh, your, uh, South Africa is mainly a brand-based a brand -based community. The, the South Africans love brands, big brands, and uh, it becomes difficult to come in and try and open something that is small in nature. Because people will need to people will need uh, time to to test your products and to and for you to penetrate into the market is very difficult. Funding is another problem. Banks can only go so far in funding an individual. Considering the big question on credit history, credit history is a very big issue in South Africa, and if you don't have that, then you can forget about getting. Uh, funding from banks. Thanks for that, Grace. I, I just wanted to maybe top that up 
by saying that um, I, I think there are dynamics on both sides of, of every border that needs to be considered. And there's also uh, trade agreements that SMEs can consult when they consider to uh, invest cross-border. Um, what, what do you think are the current opportunities in the prevailing climate for SMEs to consider when they think about uh, cross-border trade? Um, I, I actually think this is the best time to invest if you're a small business person or a small business owner or even a starter because suddenly we have less imports coming in, there's scarcity all around us, especially food and material. And I feel that if you can look into what is missing into the around you, if you can find out through corporations which are already intact and which have already been formed around inter-Africa trade, they do exist. Uh, we can we can help the the local business person and the small SMEs to tap into the current situation of scarcity. Sure. Okay, so you, you, you're putting a point across that speaks to the fact that Africa needs to trade with itself, it needs to pick up on the opportunities that are available, and it needs to share product cross-border. Um, why do you think there's a scarcity in, in product coming from overseas? Is it due to the pandemic, or do you have a view that uh, we ourselves as Africans are getting closer to the reality that we need to up the trade between each other? I think the answer is twofold. First and foremost, considering the situation at the moment, there's real scarcity. Sure. We are, we are hardly getting imports. And uh, even if the imports come in, they're very slow in transporting between one, one port to another. So the scarcity may be here for a while. Secondly, uh, over the years, we killed many of our industries, our textiles industries, because we, are, uh, we were on the opinion that the cheaper, the better. Sometimes cheaper is costly, and now we are facing the we are facing the reality now that should we have continued to produce our own products locally, there would be no there would be no scarcity. Even if there is no money flowing around in the current economy, we could even go back to our usual butter trade. Sure. You have maize, I have potatoes. We exchange. A neighboring country might have maize, and we don't have. Uh, carrots and then we can decide okay let's butter trade an economy is what you make it and i think we have the opportunity as africa at the moment to uh, to now process our raw materials and not export them but learn how to process them from the beginning wow. we have our coffee we have our tea why don't we learn how to grind it in our own kitchens i love what you're saying i th that's a very big topic that you just touched on and i, I think for another day we have to get deeper into that because it's got so many dynamics that it holds. We are a few days away from the launch of my first book called The Business Legend. In the book I speak about compliance as an anchoring element for all businesses. I'm asking Grace, how does compliance relate to her values when she trades into Africa and with African businesses? We all know that compliance in relation to corruption is a big issue uh, in terms of the images that businesses from Africa have across the world. I want to ask you, in, in, in the current situation, do you believe that the normal SMME uh, that lacks funding um, has an opportunity to expand their scope, if you like, uh, without the necessary funding? to seek opportunities obviously in, 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 in Africa. Because one of the things that I have picked up, if you have a conversation with any SMME owner, the one thing that comes up is what Grace said. If you speak about Europe and, and America and, and, and these foreign countries, it's about the currency that blocks them from trading overseas. Uh, when it comes to Africa, it's this whole idea of corruption and stereotyping. How, how, do you, how, do you, how do you feel about corruption and the stereotyping around it? As a business person, I would like to call corruption by other names like a connection, a hindrance. And uh, I believe that if you're trying to get off your feet and there's no funding and you're depending on monetary terms, then it will be difficult for you. But I think looking into the current situation, we have learned that you actually don't need money to do anything. You can start with what you have in the in the house 
I was out the other day and people were having a nice uh, boot sale oh. where you bring your old clothes, you bring your unused items in the house and people sold and they went home with cash. What you make out of that, you can go and start a small business. You can start with just selling two items. You make your profit, then you move on to another five items. I don't think the economy is really what we call it. The economy is what you term it to be as the business person. That's a point that we spoke about earlier. In, in terms of uh, your perception of corruption, you, your view is um, it's either part of the, the trade culture and it's, uh, it's what it is and you need to adjust to it. Um, uh, where, where does where, where does organizational values fit into this? If I if I go cross border into uh, Zambia, for example, as a South African business, and my values are anchored in a way that doesn't allow me to trade in a certain way, uh, should I be more flexible when I want to enter Zambia, or what, what do you think? Um, sometimes flexibility may need you may mean you also get into the corruption. So I think we need to find ways to let corruption be and find your way around it sure because it may take time to beat corruption but that doesn't mean you cannot trade because there's corruption grace uh, be, before the interview we had a light out chat about grail your own brand and um i simply like the fact that it you know connects africa the way it does do you want to run us through your your manufacturing process um basically we source the materials locally and also across africa and then we manufacture them here and then we post them on social media, preferably Facebook for now, maybe to expand later and then people order online and we supply. It doesn't matter which part of the country you are in and soon on the, once the borders open, we shall be able to continue supplying people out of South Africa. Thank you. Thank you for your time, Grace. And uh, folks, do check out uh, Grace's product line online. Um, a truly African brand and uh, we're very proud to, to be with Grace here today. Uh, look, uh, we look forward to chatting with you soon.